Married to the Russian mob, a true story you're not going to hear anywhere else, today on The Hot Zone. Today I'm bringing you a special edition of The Hot Zone where we explore a really strange and kind of scary example of online dating gone horribly wrong. Now, I've had my own problems with people using my photos to scam women online, often swindling them out of tens of thousands of dollars. So as I've been researching this topic, I ran across a guy whose story is just mind boggling. It's so crazy. I want you to hear it for yourself. Just listen. Uh, my name is Jonathan Farley. I'm a mathematician. I, I tried to use a mail order bride service um, in order to get married, and I went to Russia. So that's why I was disarmed, because if someone contacts you, like if a Nigerian prince contacts you, you're forewarned. But if you contact someone, you don't expect the person you're contacting would be uh, a criminal. Yeah. So, yeah. so I met her. The conversation wasn't really uh, very interesting, to be perfectly honest. However, uh, I thought that maybe things were aligning, that it was the universe, because I wouldn't have traveled 7,000 miles to meet this girl, but having, since I was there in person, I decided to continue the correspondence and actually met her. So uh, during the summer, I uh, happened to be in Europe when uh, she's, uh, her name was, uh, or the name she gave was uh, Alona Dauksha. Uh, she said her, uh, she and her parents were in Turkey, so I actually met the people she said were her parents. They had a, uh, uh, a posh apartment in Turkey by the water in a place called Alanya, a resort town with lots of Russians. So I had no reason to think that this was a scam uh, because, in fact, if anything, I thought they were richer than I was. So this woman wasn't trying to, um, to con me out of any money. And so I guess this is the lesson that I want people to um, uh, to. To um, understand to take away uh, that I, I read lots of books on scams, obviously, and uh, none of the scams said that the person scamming you might work with other people. So I thought I was meeting her parents. She said they were her parents. I didn't think that I, I was a little surprised that they were so friendly because I thought, hmm, uh, so their 20 year old daughter wants to marry a, a 42 year old man or 43 year old man. And they're really friendly. I thought, great. Um, but I, I was a little surprised, I have to be honest. Um, and uh, But I now believe that those may not have been her parents, that they probably weren't her parents. That, that was a gang that they were working with, that they may have actually rented that apartment precisely to get me to be disarmed. She actually never asked me for any money. I took her on, on uh, we, we had excursions while I was there. I stayed in my own hotel room. She stayed in the flat that her parents had, or the people said were her parents that they had. Um, so we went on excursions. Um, then the following year, I actually uh, went to back to Turkey. And again, we stayed in separate rooms, but uh, we went to uh, Istanbul. And uh, she never said, give me the money. But obviously, I had to show that I had some means in order to take her on these trips. But again, I was caught. I, I uh I wasn't thinking that she was a crook because the usual scam is, you know, give me money or like you say in your YouTube video, uh, there's some emergency, I need money. She didn't do that for three years. And that was only when she had to go to the U.S. Embassy or so she claimed in order to get the visa to come over. And then she said she needed two thousand dollars because they make people, um, she said, uh, take medical exams and hotels in Moscow are expensive. And the amount of money that she asked me for was reasonable. But then when she came to the United States, uh, her behavior, uh, after about the third day, her behavior changed pretty radically. But during the course of the four months she was in the United States, um, uh, we, well, we separated after less than four months of marriage. And she was very rude and insulting. Uh, she had never been like that before. Uh, and um, at one point, I just moved out because her behavior was so strange. Uh, that I thought it was lead she was trying to provoke me. And I knew that once she saw that she couldn't provoke me, she would just start lying. So I moved out and that caught her by surprise. And she, uh, she said, um, you know, have you, have you heard of the Russian mafia? If anything happens to me, then maybe you'll be in the news. 
I didn't think that she could possibly have any connection with the Russian mafia. I thought she was just mad. Until what I didn't expect was that in about nine days, um, I would have bought her a plane ticket to leave to go back to Turkey. And she would have stolen all the furniture, the new furniture and the new apartment that I got because of her. Um, and uh, she did it so efficiently that she, I realized, hmm, she really probably was telling the truth. She was working with the Russian mafia because uh, I couldn't have cleared out my apartment so efficiently in what she perhaps had two days really to do it in because that was the time from when I bought the plane ticket mm -hmm. to when the plane was supposed to leave. So, so uh, here, let me ask you a question. Um, when she kind of turned on you and moved out, uh, when it's all said and done, uh, how much did this boondoggle end up costing you? So I uh, did a reckoning and I thought it was about $50,000, but I just, in pre preparation for this, I tried thinking how to get up to that sum again. And I, I don't quite remember. I know that, um, uh, you know, the furniture was about $4,000. The apartment, which I could no longer use because I, I had to get another apartment when I moved out and there were no refunds, cost me probably about $15,000 for the year, maybe $18,000 for the year. Uh, I know that during that summer, I had one or perhaps two credit card bills, which totaled up to about, uh, each one was like $12,000. Now, you might be asking, how can I not know if I had one or two credit card bills? That's because that summer was such a nightmare. Mm -hmm. I, I really, I mean, I could go back and do an accounting, um, but it was such a nightmare. And then there are other expenses. Every time she went to the supermarket, which is every week, she spent $300. When we went to stores, she would spend literally four hundred, five hundred, even nine hundred dollars on stuff, and and it was just junk. And uh, I thought that she was just getting used to the dollar versus the ruble, and because the books I read said that in time they'll understand that they can't just spend all this money. Um, but no, it was part of her plan. I now see. But the. Uh, the plan probably was to spend as much of my money as possible to just sell the stuff. Uh, she was a very effective liar. There are many times when I was suspicious about things that she said, but I just chalked it up to her being a weird person, the sort of person that would have parents who want, would want her to get married off to some guy who was 42 or 43 because they, or at the time 46, because they didn't, um, you know, they knew she needed someone to take care of her. That's what I thought. Yeah. But no, instead, once I realized that she was probably telling the truth when she said she was linked with the Russian mafia, when I realized that, I realized that 99% of the actions that she took actually made a lot of sense. They weren't the actions of a crazy person. They were actions that made sense if her goal was just to take as much money as possible from me and get the green card. Uh, I thought I could handle anything up until that point, including, uh, you know, if if I got cancer, I thought I could handle that. This, I realized, was something I couldn't handle. So I was out of it for about um, a year. You know, every time I would go over to the apartment complex to pay the rent, I'd be done for the weekend. And I spoke to another investigator about a year ago, another reporter. And uh, I, uh, after I spoke with her, I was deflated again. Now I think I'm okay. It's been two years. <laughs> uh, I haven't heard from her. Um, the divorce still hasn't gone through because she left and my current lawyer, you know, the laws are more complicated in Maryland. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, I haven't been in touch with her at all. I only know that she's even still alive because, uh, my lawyer, his assistant said he got a message back from her when they tried to reach her. The, um, a lot of guys need to know that these women work with other people because many of the actions my wife took were actions that would make you trust her. For example, a lot of uh, the women that you might imagine engaging in these schemes are gonna uh, dress in um, provocatively in bikinis or what have you. My wife didn't do that. Uh, um, in fact, she gave the appearance of being a good girl. As I said, I met people that she claimed to be her parents. I think if most women are gonna engage in a scheme like this, which is tantamount to prostitution, they're not gonna involve their parents, right? But um, they literally, trick men like me for a living. That's why they're so good at it. And then secondly, I think there needs to be a change at the legislative level. 
there needs to be no incentive for these women. Right now, the incentive is fast track for the green card, one, and two, uh, of course, money from the husband. I, I had to pledge to the U.S. government that I was going to support this woman even if we got a divorce and uh, she had to go on welfare or something like that. So obviously there's a tremendous financial incentive and that should be removed. I would say even that the uh, there should be no fast track for the green card and that in the event of a divorce within, say, I don't know, 10 years, the wife should have to return to her home country. Why not? Uh, the FBI didn't care. You know, we have all this talk about Russian agents infiltrating U.S. institutions. Here's a girl who tells me that she is connected with the Russian mafia, who who demonstrates it by stealing all my stuff in a very efficient manner that even I couldn't have done. Um, she also damaged the lock to make sure that I couldn't get in and inspect the apartment before I when I picked her up to take her away to the airport. She's new to the city, had no car of her own, and could do all of that within a couple of days. Um, and so you would think the police would be interested in making sure that there's no Russian gang working in Baltimore, where I live. You would think the FBI would be interested. You would think U.S. Customs and Immigration would be interested. You would think that Immigration and Customs Enforcement would be interested. None of them have gotten back to me. Mm. So uh, it's kind of disheartening because it, it'll happen to more and more men. And so that's the message that I want to get out so that more men don't fall for um, what I fell for. Yeah. So I know people you... are going to say they're not stupid, so they're not going to fall for it. And I don't want to be arrogant and say that I'm not stupid. Other people can decide. <laughs> but I actually took lots of precautions, and I got fooled completely. Mm -hmm. Right. And, I mean, here you are, a, a, you know, you're obviously an intelligent man. You're a mathematician. Got to be smarter than I am to be a mathematician. You know, it's interesting to hear this from your point of view, uh, because typically the people getting scammed by these relationship scams are women, as you know. Um, yes. And I found out because the scammers have been using my photos for years to scam women. And I keep thinking, I just need to get famous enough so they won't be able to do that. <laughs> but um, in reality, uh, this is a absolutely epidemic problem uh it yes. is, is unbelievable i'm gonna actually try to go to uh, nigeria later this year and uh, do some more investigative reporting on the the nigerian connection to all of these kind of scams but this is something that is a whole different level i mean the, to hear about what happened to you was so complex they were so patient to wait yes. three years <laughs> I, you know? It was amazing. Well, in retrospect, I realized that they weren't uh, that they I thought, wow, three years just for a guy who makes a regular income like me. Uh, but then I realized, you know what, before we actually got married, we'd only been in the same place for about two months. Right. Because I visited her mm -hmm. with the people she claimed were her parents. Um, and that was about three weeks. And then. When went to uh, when we went to uh, back when I went back to Turkey that was another two weeks, uh, so it really wasn't that long that big an investment of time on her part. When we were apart, she only would we would only Skype maybe once a month, and I thought that was weird. She only wants to Skype once a month, mm -hmm. but I thought okay fine because the conversations were kind of dull anyway. Now you might ask why did I get married to her if the conversation was so dull? I, I thought. You know, first of all, things would improve in time. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't suspecting anything because I'd had a previous girlfriend who talked very little. So I knew that there wasn't necessarily anything nefarious about a sure. girl who didn't really talk much. When she went away, I, w I was feeling bad that, boy, you know, I was involved with this young girl for three years. And that took away three years of her youth with, that she could have used to, to meet and marry some other guy. Mm -hmm. And then about two days after she left, I put the pieces together and I realized, oh, wait, no, she was scamming me. And not only not only was it not a marriage that fell apart, she had never intended for the marriage to work. It was a scheme that she had embarked on from the very beginning. And I realized, ah, yeah, this weird thing made no sense to me at the time. Now it makes perfect sense. This other weird thing made no sense to me, but now it makes perfect sense. Wow. Unbelievable. Well, it's obvious that that uh, the the number one reason why she was able to do that is because you're a good, honest, trusting person and expect other people to, to be the same. And that's one thing yeah. that I've noticed. Uh, the more I, I, the more time I spend outside the United States, 
the more I realize that it, one of the things about the U.S. that makes it such a great place is that the culture is based on the concept of do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And even yes. people who don't have a Judeo-Christian back uh, upbringing have lived in that kind of culture their entire life, and they've been steeped in it, and they understand yes. and expect that the rest of the world is that way. But what yes. I've found traveling to the rest of the world is that most of the world operates on the mirror image of that, which is do unto others before they do unto you, take from others before they take from you. And, yes. and so we do get bamboozled easily because of that. As more and more people use the internet to find their soulmate, it's just incredible how many ways criminals are finding to separate people from their money. I realize this podcast is supposed to be about areas of crisis and threats around the globe, but sometimes this story proves the threat comes to you and can take the most unlikely of forms. 